Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 24th of August of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And of course the most important update that as a result of terrorist attack the head of Wagner Prigozhin and his right hand Dmitry Utkin was killed as a result of that terrorist attack. That was terrible and the Russians lost just not just the businessman, not just the mercenary, um, not just the most famous soldier probably uh, or the head of organizations. The Russians lost the hero, the Russians lost the leader who was moving and leading the Russian army to the victory. And basically uh, currently there are no such person on the territory of Ukraine, there is no such a person in Russia who who can be uh, as famous as Prigozhin and who can do the things that he did. And this is very terrible and this is very difficult because uh, lots of people, there is of course the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, Sergei Shoigu, there is Valery Gerasimov also, uh, can, they, they, these, two, these two people can replace Prigozhin but they can replace him on the paper. You know that uh, they say that uh, the power is not the thing that you can give to somebody, the power is the thing that you you can take by yourself that you are able to take by yourself and Prigozhin was the man of power because the power he had he t he t he took this power with his own hands when with his own bloody hands when he was storming and attacking uh, uh, Papasna the settlement of Papasna and Artyomov Skorbakhmut when talking about Shoigu and uh, Gerasimov nobody can adapt them or replace by them uh, Shoigu because it's not the power because the power the Russians currently need uh, are need to start everything from the beginning they need to start creating their own hero the man who will lead the russian army to the victory of course we can say that putin is the leader he can lead the russian army but putin is not the commander putin is not the person who can build strategical plans to start offensive operation to be on the ground the only thing that putin can do is to replace dismiss and adopt this or that person on this or that position and so this is the main difference currently the russians don't have have a man of power, an uh, army leader who can do a lot of things, who can criticize the Ministry of Defense, who can stand for the soldier and who can tell the truth to the main Russian military authorities. From now on there is no such a person on the ground and this is a very big loss for the Russians. Very big loss and there, are no per there is no person, there are no man who can replace him. So this is the reason the Russians need to start from the beginning. For example, today the president of Russian Federation um, gave his apologies for people, for men, for family, to families who, uh, whose um, like relatives died in those planes, planes and so on. He talked a lot about Prigozhin. He talked a lot of good. He said a lot of good words about him and so on. And after uh, all this situation, we start all this speech, the meetings with the people. We start receiving lots of very interesting updates regarding Wagner's. Lots of channels who are very close to Wagner start reporting that uh, Wagner teams and Wagner commanders receive an order to start the deployment process to the south and the sources are saying that the Russians took a decision to reinforce the Russian southern uh, team such a southern army with Wagner's who were located on the territory of Belarus. Of course probably this is a very nice trick very nice uh, solution for Russian forces first of all this is a media thing this is the media thing that can break the Ukrainian spirit that can break their willing to fight but from the other side we have one question if this piece of information is correct that the Russians took a decision to redeploy Wagner forces to the south the question is who is going to lead this army who which who is the man whom who will have um, the um, spirit who will have will to fight and we need a lot of people to believe this person who can replace Prigozhin and to tell the truth, when talking about the current situation, there is no such a person who can replace Wagner. Just one man, except one person. Except one person. And today we got some updates from some Russian sources that Prigozhin will be replaced uh, when pra Wagner's will be redeployed to the south, that Prigozhin will be replaced by Suravikin the king or the like how he's called the man of Armageddon or the Armageddon himself he was very close to Prigozhin we heard that after the Prigozhin attempt uh, military coup when he was dismissed from his position when he uh, Surovikin was dismissed from his position
situation first of all he was arrested and so on his situation was very bad and he uh, the russians were planning to maybe to got him in prison at least this is the piece of information we got from the open source but today uh, this week we got update that he was replaced by another person by another man and uh, currently there, there were no updates about his destiny and now we start receiving updates that probably Suravikin will be returned and he will replace Prigozhin and he will be in charge of Wagner's in the south in the battle of Rabotina, uh, Urajaina, and so on. And the thing is that Wagner's are not the soldiers, is not an army who whose main purpose is to defend. They are stormtroopers. So as I understand, probably there's a very high chances that the Russians will soon launch their own counteroffensive operation. And this is probably the most important thing to start the Russian counteroffensive. And the thing is that the last victory, the last victory, a normal victory that the Russians managed to achieve during the special military operation took place in May when Wagner's managed to capture Bakhmut. That was the last Russian victory in this special military operation during the previous in this year and this is a very big problem because if you're losing if you're losing territory if you're losing bridges if you're are losing like is uh, air defense systems if you're losing your ships if you're losing territory small villages and so on um, you start getting tired of the situation the level of your trust reduced and you feel very tired of this war and basically we can see the situation on the ground and the final strike against the russian spirit against the russian willing to fight was the kill of uh, um, of prigozhin and currently the russians authorities the russian commanders understand that they need to break the media situation and they need to bring the victory and not just the victory like taking under control a small village like sako and vanceti where we can find two uh, two buildings not the victory like taking under control the settlement like Novaya Gorovka somewhere in the Kupin's front line the Russians need territory and the towns the Russians need to capture the towns like Avdeevka like Kupinsk like let's see Velika Novoselovka Arekhov Gulai Polya the Russians need to create the new front line they need to return their trust to the military authorities after a line after a line uh, a row of defeats that took place since the uh, end of the battle of Bakhmut. just remember during the previous three months the russians of course nobody says that the ukrainians are winning no the ukrainians are losing the ukrainians uh, have uh, had significant number of losses but we don't feel uh, some problems with them in comparison with the russians since the beginning of the end of the battle of Bakhmut, the russians lost a lot of settlements on, on the vremevka tactical bridgehead Car finally the not finally currently they have lost Rabu the Ukrainians managed to destroy the bridge one more time. Yesterday, the Ukrainians managed to land in Crimea and to uh, make a small operation in, in this area. The Ukrainians managed to return control over Antonov Bridge. The Ukrainians managed to um, force the Russians to uh, step back from the territories that was captured by the Wagners in the vicinity of, uh, of Bakhmut and Artyomoks. And finally, the Ukrainians managed to kill uh the prigozhin the head of wagner's a lot of losses a lot of very small um, failures and if we can calculate everything we see the big problem the big not problem on the ground not the problem like with military uh, situation but the problem with the spirit and uh, with the problem with the willing to continue the special military operation the russians need victories and prigozhin was just one person who gave the russians those victories when talking about the uh, recent and latest uh, uh, phases of the special military operation if the russians are not able to break the media situation and if the russians are not able to start providing the russians victories they will lose not from perspective of military perspective they will lose from the spirit perspective and probably and even the loss the loss of the war in the spirit perspective is much more difficult and terrible in comparison with the loss in military way because even if you lose a settlement in military way like ukrainians in bakhmut they found the power and they found forces to continue regrouping and to 
continue counter-attacking and we see the results of that regrouping, that spiritual regrouping from the Ukrainian side. Furthermore, one more time, some sources are saying that probably uh, Surovikin will be in charge of Wagner's, they will redeploy to the south and they will begin their own counter-offensive operation and the main, main purpose of that counter-offensive operation is not just to take Malatakmachko or Arekhov, the purpose is to force the Ukrainians to step back as far as possible to Dnipro and to establish the front line along the Dnipro river and maybe even to enter Zaporozhye. So we'll see whether it's another speculation from the Russian sources or it's true because anyway the Russians don't have much time. Sooner or later in a week or in two or three the Russians will be forced to start acting because the Ukrainians are not sleeping. They will continue attacks, they will continue terrorist operations, they will continue at striking Moscow with drones, they will continue killing Russian officers, Russian soldiers, Russian patriots and they will continue doing all these things that they uh, were doing, uh, have been doing since the beginning of the special military operation. Now let's move to the ground. Of course, the most important, probably the most interesting event that took place during the previous 24 hours is the Ukrainian attempt to land their forces on in on Crimea. The Ukrainians sent two boats and as a result of a small landing operation, they managed to move some infantry on the on the Russian uh, shore of Crimea, uh, they got uh, to the shore, they start attacking just maybe in the sky uh, and after that the Russians have redeployed some forces in this area and the Ukrainians tried to decision, take a decision not to uh, test their luck and basically they left this territory and they moved back to Odessa. Later some Russian sources reported that during the uh, withdrawal process, withdrawal process, the Russians managed to destroy the Ukrainian boats and all the Ukrainians who uh, landed on Crimea were destroyed somewhere in the Black Sea, of course without any video or photo confirmation. When talking about Kherson area, the clashes continues in this area. The Russians reported that as a result of artillery duels, 30 soldiers were Ukrainian soldiers were killed, two art armored vehicles and two artillery systems. As you can see, the Russians mainly uh, used the uh, artillery strikes, combination of artillery strikes and drone strikes. The Russians tried to reduce the Ukrainian presence along the bank of Dnipro river using Lancet, guided bombs. The Ukrainians, uh, when talking about geolocated videos, have possibility just to use drones. Something wrong with Ukrainian artillery. We haven't received uh, almost nothing about the artillery strikes of Ukrainian forces in this area, just drones attacks. Now we're moving further to the Bradley Square to Arekhov area. Today we got a lot of updates from this bridgehead. The Russians continue bombing and shelling and attacking the Ukrainian forces in Pitihatki. There was a video how the Russian T-90 tank was attacking the Ukrainian positions inside the settlement with, from the hidden position. Uh, the Russians also published the video of attacking the Ukraine position with the cluster rounds. The Ukraine infantry was moving along the forest lines. After that, the Russians started bombing them with the cluster rounds just to pin them down and not to allow them to uh, complete their reconnaissance operation or something like this. When talking about Bradley Square, as you can see, uh, the second day in a row we haven't received nothing, no, if from the Ukrainian side, even a single geolocated video. Uh, the main geolocations we received from the Russian side, uh, no, there was just one video, probably even from the Russians, how the Ukrainians were from the Russian side, how the Ukrainians were trying to rotate their forces in the southern part of Rabotina. On this video we see how the Ukrainians sent their Bradley and after that the Ukrainians left the building on the south, entered the Bradley and evacuated from this combat line. Uh, before uh, also the Russians published the video how they were bombing and shelling the same building, this one, which the Ukrainians were using for rotation or where the Ukrainians tried to, made, uh, to make rotation. Uh, also the Russians during the day were bombing and shelling the northern uh, part of the settlement, the central part of the settlement, trying not to allow the Ukrainians to accumulate their forces to collect the critical mass and not to allow the Ukrainians to complete the assault of the southern part of Rabotina. But uh, as I understand that wasn't a problem for the Ukrainians because they were sending more and more forces to the northern part using the safe roads they have created during the first two or three months of the storming of the settlement. 
uh, almost every single hour another and another wave of stormtroopers assault forces were moving inside of Rabochna with one purpose to continue the pressure to replace the soldiers that were killed during the previous wave and to force the Russians to step back from the southern area yet the, Rus uh, yet the Ukrainians haven't managed to do this the Russians still control the southern area they still have uh, safe roads to send also some infantry and reinforcements to this area with purpose to slow down the Ukrainians and not to allow them to capture the settlement completely. Also, the Russians established fire and drone control over the fields between Rabotina and uh, uh, between Rabotina and Verbova. On this video, we see how the Russian FVP drone uh, damaged and probably uh, critically damaged the Ukrainian Leopard tank. As a result of that strike, Leopard was damaged and probably later uh, this was destroyed. Another video we see how the Russians discovered the movement of Ukrainian Bradley among the fields and also as a result of FEP drone strike that Bradley was damaged probably later was destroyed as a result of fire uh, on the top of machine and we have also, the Russian source are saying that because of a very uh, significant accumulation of Ukrainian tanks, armored vehicles, Bradleys uh, in the p fields between Rabotina and Verbova, the Russians uh, brought significant number of artillery systems in this area and they opened the, let's say, um, some sort of line of uh, supporting this area with Krasnopol rounds, these Krasnopol accurate rounds. And starting of today, now we got a lot of videos how the Russians were using Krasnopol to destroy and to attack the Ukrainian armored vehicles also in the fields between Rabotina. The thing is that while the Ukrainians, while one part of Ukrainian forces tried to storm Rabotina, another part of Ukrainian forces accumulated uh, their a very big quantity of units along this line and currently try to complete the mining process because the Ukrainians can't proceed further, can't continue their offensive operation in the direction of Verbova, Novopakrovka until they demine these fields and only after that they can continue their offensive operation. And this is the reason of redeployment of Krasnopol rounds, of drone, of Lancet in this area because now the main purpose of the Russians to discover the Ukrainian demining equipment and to destroy this equipment as fast as possible and not to allow the Ukrainians to complete this process because as soon as they demine the fields they will continue and proceed their offensive operation further in the direction of Rabotina, in the direction of Verbova and of course in direction of uh, Novopakrovka. So we'll see whether the Ukrainians are able to do this or not. As a result of fierce clashes in this area, the Ukrainians lost 110 soldiers, 11 armored vehicles and 4 tanks. Furthermore, the Russians attacked and destroyed a lot of um, like ammo depots and uh, artillery systems behind Arekhov. On this video we see another Lancet strike. The Ukrainians were trying to hide their M uh, M109 artillery system, Palladian, but uh, those attempts were useless. The Russians discovered the Palladian and as a result of Lancet strike that artillery system was destroyed somewhere among the brushes on the north of, of Arekhov. On another video we see how the Ukrainians were trying to hide the fuel track or ammo track. The Russians discovered that system and as a result of artillery strike that ammo depot uh, was destroyed. Now we're moving further to the Vremyevka tactical bridgehead. We got just probably one geolocated video from this area. The Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian tank very far to the north from the main fields on the north on the east of Blagodatna as a result of Lancet strike that tank was damaged or even destroyed. Furthermore, as you can see, no updates. Uh, the Ukrainians had a lot of losses during the previous battles. Currently, they're regrouping and they're getting ready before the next waves of attack. Today is Independence Day. I'm not sure that the Ukrainians are going to do anything. O also, the most important that uh, probably the death of Prigozhin wasn't expected to many people and now either the Russians and the Ukrainians try to understand what they're going to do next and the British intelligence also confirmed that the Russians took a decision to redeploy their forces, uh, Wagner forces to the south for some purposes. Don't forget that the last time we saw Wagner's on the combat line uh, where, um, was May, three months passed since that situation. Uh, around 30 40,000 army will be removed back and one more time probably Surawikin will be in charge of this small we can say reading quotes army 
Now we are moving to the near front line. We had a lot of very interesting updates from this area as well. Mainly the Russians continue bombing and shelling the Ukraine positions in Konstantinovka and Novomikhailovka. So the Russians continue their preparation of their offensive operation in this direction. Probably they will soon they will start this attack as well. But not earlier than Wagner's will restart their will launch their own assault operation to the north. And we got the first video from Avdeevka for the previous two weeks. The Russians were bombing and attacking in the Ukrainian uh, industrial area, small facility, water pump facility or something like this. A very powerful stronghold on the east of Avdeevka, a very big, uh, very tough nut for the Russians. The Russians have been trying to uh, crack this nut since the beginning of 2014 when this uh, fortification was established by the Ukrainians during the first Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Uh, there are still Ukrainians and the Russians can't proceed further to the eastern part of Avdeevka without taking this stronghold under their control. Uh, when talking about Klishevka and Bakhmut Artemovsk, we got one video, very interesting video from this bridge hat. Um, and there were two videos, at least one of the video, the Russians destroyed artillery system somewhere in the vicinity of Ivanovska as a result of uh, artillery strike. But this is just another geolocation video to show the uh, the progress and process of counter artillery duels. The most important video we got from the North and the Ukrainians, to be more precise, the forces of 30th mechanized brigade power published the video of their offensive operation in direction of the Russian trenches, in direction of Zelizhnyanska, and probably as a result of that attack that took place, that been taking place since uh, the 22nd till uh, today, till 24th of August, as a result of that attack, probably the Ukrainians managed to establish control over this territory and to force the Russians to step back. Of course, we need to have more evidence of this situation, but here's the video. Though the attack uh, started on the 22nd of August, so not uh, even yesterday, the day before yesterday, uh, probably the Ukrainians wanted to keep the situation until the Independence Day, so, so to show like another victory, local small victory in this area. We see how the Ukrainian tank managed to get the combat positions, the forest, and after that they start bombing and attacking. After that, the Ukrainians managed to land their infantry in front of the forest, and the Ukrainian soldiers launched a storming assault operation of Russia positions in the forest we will not watch the next the second part of the video because there were a lot of casualties a lot of killed russian soldiers in that forest and because of that a lot of moments episodes of that video inside of the forest i make a conclusion that ukrainians as a result of that attack managed to capture and to force the russians to step back this is another very bad situation for the russians another great loss of the russians on the northern flank of uh bakhmut of artumovsk of of course, for now, I'm not sure whether I need to change the color of map because this that this is just the only uh, confirmation, the video geolocated confirmation from the ground. Probably we need to wait more to get more inform piece of updates from other mappers, from official sources, and after that we will update. But anyway, I'm telling you that as a result of offensive operation, probably, and there is a very high chances that Ukrainians managed to force the Russians to step back from this forest from in the vicinity of Zelizhenskaya. The Russians reported that as a result of clashes in this area, the Ukrainians lost another 125 soldiers, nine armored vehicles, including one tank. Probably the tanks was destroyed somewhere around during the battle of that stronghold. When talking about Siversk and bridge hats, today we also got uh, some updates. Uh, the Russian and Ukrainian forces continue counter drone duels in the line between uh, Sporne and uh, Lysychansk oil refinery. The Russians were attacking the Ukrainian positions with drones. Uh, the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian positions with drones. So nothing special, nothing new, no, no changes on the ground. Uh, when talking about uh, Liman, uh, Tarskoy um, salient, we got just one video uh, when the Russians, as a result of counter artillery duels, managed to discover the Ukrainian Akatsa somewhere in the vicinity of Yampel, and after that, as a result of artillery strike, that uh, Akatsa was destroyed in hidden position, and also the Russians managed to destroy the Ukrainian ammo depot also somewhere in this area, probably the ammo depot of that artillery system. No changes on the ground. When talking about Kupiansk, we haven't received almost nothing. More updates from the Ministry of Defense.
concerns about another offensive operation, about another day of improvement of Russian position on the edge of the combat line. So nothing special, nothing new, no confirmation video or photo on the ground. So just the chats and just the messages. The only geolocate video we have is destroy with Lancet another M or 109 Hovitzer Palladian somewhere on the Kupin's front line. So this is another problem. Yes that I was talking about in the first part of the video, that the Russians tired of losing and of being defeated. Because, of course, we see that the Ukrainians lost a lot of soldiers, a lot of armored vehicles, a lot of tanks, significant losses. We understand this, we understand this, but uh, people, uh, even if, let's say, we can make some kind of comparison, we can live in the richest country in the world, but we can be unemployed and we can, do, and we can be situation when we don't have money even if we live in the mo in the richest country in the world so the same situation with the russians even if the russians are able to defeat and they're defeating the ukrainians every single day by killing and destroying thousands and thousands of ukrainian soldiers we don't see any progress on the ground and the progress on the ground victories and battles some progress uh, in Ukraine opening the front line is the only thing that the Russian soldier can understand not just the Russian soldier but also the Russian society and so on without these victories this war can be finished uh, in a very unpleasant way for the Russians and that's it for today military summer channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye